Welcome back to Games Revealed. I'm James and also the Brink and we are one. So today I want to talk about a cool little update that came out from Steam about the Steam Deck. And it's kind of ample time. I released a video on bugs yesterday and it seems to potentially fix some of those bugs that I talked about yesterday. So that is good. They listened to me. It only took them a day. So uh, with this rate, you know, every bug will be fixed by the end of the week. Um, <clears throat> but jokes aside, I just want to also say, like, I got the, the email. I should be doing a lot more Steam Deck uh, content once I get my Steam Deck. Uh, it's going to be a pretty rich month of May. So uh, please keep an eye out for that because I will be doing a lot of different things. And this has made me even more excited for my Steam Deck because uh, once we get into these updates, uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty banger update list. And so they've done a killer job the past month. And so before I talk anymore, let's make sure to like, subscribe, bash that bell with your crowbar. Now, let's just let's just get into it. Steam Deck client and OS update, lock screen, power improvements, and more. And the more, emphasis on the more. Um, the lock screen, I think, is one of the most requested features of the Steam Deck. I was really surprised when I found out it didn't have it, just because it's a portable device. Anything that's portable nowadays needs some type of lock screen, whether or not you have family, you know, I don't know about friends too much if you're worried about it, but if you have roommates, whatever, just it, it's nice to keep things locked, especially if you can, like, I believe with with the Steam client, like on my computer, I can buy things pretty easily. I don't usually have to put in a password. So once it's like, once I go down that route and I click the OK and, and buy, it's it's done deal. You don't want a kid or someone else vengeful going on and buying a bunch of games on your credit card. So I, I think that's a really important thing. Now, there's a couple of things that are very important for when applying this update that they mentioned in the beginning. Um, and it's right here. When updating, make sure to, you are in game mode, not desktop mode. If you're updated from, <clears throat> if you're, you've updated from desktop mode and are stuck in boot loop, in a boot loop, please follow these recovery instructions. So it sounds like potentially doing it in the desktop mode could put it into a boot loop, which would require you to do a recovery. It doesn't necessarily mean you'd lose all your information. You just have to reset the boot log. And they also had to do an update of the update to prevent some issues that the lock screen was having, which no surprise there. Sometimes that just happens. You have to re either iterate really quick on an update or revert uh, a few fixes. It's it's pretty common in, in a lot of software updates. So, and this has client updates and OS updates. And I believe some of the OS updates also include BIOS updates, um, which would be different. Whereas Steam OS and the BIOS are different. Um, BIOS is very hardware based. The Steam OS is very, you know, software based and it's essentially, you know, it's the operating system. So it was what allows the client portion to run. Uh, okay. So the lock screen feature, it has, it's, it, you're able to enable it on uh, wake, boot, login, and or when switching to desktop mode, which that one was an interesting one. I, I actually really like that they enabled that. So um, let's say with if you have a kid and you want them to only be in the regular mode, then or like in like the Steam client, then and prevent them from going in the desktop mode. That is very useful. In my opinion, they don't get stuck. I also I don't see anything here about purchasing. I I don't know. Maybe you could let me know in the comments below if in at least in the Steam Deck, when you purchase something, do you have to put in your credentials? Because that's another place I'd want the pin. When I get my deck this week, I will verify that. But uh, that's one that I, is very important. You can also put the pin in with the touchscreen or the controls. Pretty common. Um, they also have a localized keyboard with 21 languages and layouts. You can activate it. Uh, in a lot of ways, you know, there's a lot like with your phone, whatever, th there, it's pretty easy to activate these types of things. So if you learning, you, if you're wanting to learn a new language, learn some Japanese. Uh, yeah, you can do that. So <laughs> always kind of fun to do uh, to screw around with the keyboard. Just don't get stuck in it. <laughs> Add, it. So they added support for multiple windows within one application or game. If you press the steam to view active windows and select which window you would like to view. This can be helpful for, and they even say right here, for web browsers, game launchers, um, including uh, some of the emulators out there, uh, you can use multiple windows. And so uh, this is a feature that um, I was surprised uh, popped up. 
I, and I thought it was for a different reason than what they labeled here, but that that is actually really nice. That uh, that makes it so you can just do that bit more with your device. It seems a little bit more akin to like the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox where you can be in game and switch between like a browser or whatever application that's allowed. Um, and be aware that you know switching over to the browser could potentially because this this device is very optimized in the sense of like when you're playing a game you probably shouldn't run too much else or else you'll have uh degraded performance and with this device you need as much performance as you can get if you really want to play some of the games like especially AAA, at the best uh performance possible so just be aware of that it's not an open invitation to open up a ton of different chrome tabs or whatever you're using so they also updated the achievement page and they made it so it loads faster and it's easier. And they, I believe, cleaned up also like the new, um, the uh, achievements also. Yeah, they have a drop down, allows players to quickly compare stats against any friend who also plays. They also updated the add friends and pending requests into one page, which is nice, to be honest. Like there's some UX pieces in the Steam client that even on the desktop, I kind of don't understand. Adding friends, I'm hoping they improve it even more, but adding friends, pending friends, doing that, like managing that type of stuff has always been kind of a little bit too difficult. I mean, we can do it. It just takes, I feel like it takes a lot more time than it should. It should be pretty quick. Um, added logic to detect and notify users when a micro SD card doesn't match advertised storage size and specifications instead of attempting to format for a very long time. This could be partial issue with, so I reported on micro, and they, and they talk about micro SDs twice in this uh update and i have a feeling that this will hopefully partially resolve the issue where it could break your sd card and it could be just the sd card wasn't very compatible especially if you got a cheap sd card and so this is going to help warn against issues with the um, sd card potential I, i'm not going to say it's going to fix every issue that people have had but it's it, hopefully it's a good step into fixing that for a lot of people also fixed the issue where if you were remote playing and you tried to um, essentially use the options button, you couldn't do it while streaming from your PC, and that's been fixed. And I'm I'm actually really happy that it's, that's been fixed because I probably will be when at home trying to stream from my PC a little bit more than actually gaming on the device if it's a AAA, um, as I will probably be lazily laying in my bed playing AAA games that I have been putting off for a long time. And then, you know, more performance improvements for players with very large game libraries. And this one's a funny one because someone in our community, Cray, uh, Kranos, uh, short name, Cray, he's Cray Cray, and he has a large library. When I say large, it's in the thousands, and you can't look at his library, it crashes. So uh, I have a feeling this update was made just for him, and uh, rightfully so. Now we can view all his tasty, tasty games. So, also with that comes the OS updates, and so I, th I believe some of these come from that beta, or if not all, the beta was merged into this update, so a, a big part of this update, I believe, it includes either partial parts of the beta that you could opt into, or all of it. It all depends on what they want to cherry pick out of it, if they decided to go that route, or release it, or merge it fully, because I know some of these features in here were not a part of those beta uh, pieces, but I do know some of them were. So... Uh, they have the message for the charger. So if your uh, charger doesn't, it doesn't meet the minimum spec or wattage, it, it will alert you about it, which is really good. Phones have been doing this for a while. It's it's really, it's a very nice little thing to have. This I don't know if the Switch does it yet. It's been out for a long time. If it doesn't do it yet, I don't think we'll ever do it. Um, the, the Switch, I, I and it even warns, like you need to use the included charger because it has a watt, um, it, it needs a certain wattage in order for it to actually charge and charge and while especially while you're playing and using the dock this is just nice to have a warning for a lot of people they just don't understand or oh, um the wattage the watts thing with power supply units so uh, they also added um uncapped framework settings in the ac quick access menu and i thought that was i i like I, I really like any time that we have these abilities to um, just manipulate the frame rate and manipulate things that will give us better performance. Uh, that's the key in this system for me. Um, I also, I mean, it, it, it's hard because if you're a console gamer, you probably don't want to touch anything. You just want it to work. I, I kind of wish they would do uh, 
uh, community profiles where it's like, okay, if you want really good performance, you want you want five hours in this game, here's this community profile that people say, hey, this will give you five hours in this game. Um, they should open source it, kind of like make oh, put it a part of the community that is not open source, but um, unlock it for the community to make profiles for the games to adjust um, the TDP and all uh, and the different rates and stuff like that to really ink out that performance. Um, I think that would be probably one of the best things they could do, and it would especially be very useful for um, newbies and, and people just that aren't used to this type of thing. Um, they added half rate shading. It's an experimental thing. It just essentially should save you power by reducing the um, the shader rate. And so that'll be interesting to see if that's a scalable piece or if you have to download a whole new uh, shader cache to actually use that feature, um, enabling a lot more storage issues potentially. They also released FTPM support, which allows you to now boot uh, you could get around this, but you'd have to do it, I believe, off of an SD card. You can now do it on the device itself, um, and you can now install Windows 11 on your uh, S Steam Deck. Whether or not you want to do that, that's a different story, but for some people, that might be a deal breaker if they can't. So, hey, I, I, I love that they're just, they're continuing to do things that will support other operating systems. I think if, uh, if Valve keeps on doing this, it will be very good uh show of faith that hey they care about the end user as opposed to the whole uh idea of selling steam games i think they're going to sell steam games no matter what if you show a little bit more uh faith in your users i think it goes a long way and i think this is one of those things but we'll see they also they made it so that you can reset the device if it gets stuck in a bad contract uh, with a Type C device, so if the Type C device or if the Type C device is not very compatible or not compatible at all, it can actually get the device stuck. And I think that's what was kind of happening with the bad docs. And so um, with that, you had to drain it to then start you know, your device again to actually make it usable. It was like a soft brick. Um, with this, the, you can just press the options and volume down to re and hold it down just like you kind of would a, a phone or some other device that has a, a hard reset feature. It just, that's what I believe. It really just is a hard reset feature that I'm actually surprised didn't come with in the beginning. That's very useful for recovering um, your device when it gets in a bad state. And then, uh, yeah, a bunch of, a, a bunch of other updates. But the, the main one for me is the improved compatibility with number of type C docs and PCUs. Um, that one is, the is you know, it, it sucks if you buy, like I got this Anchor one and it sounds like this one potentially would have had issues um, soft breaking the uh, device, the, do the Steam Deck, if I use the HDMI potentially. And so, uh, but now from my understanding, this update should make it so it's compatible. It was, it, it's a complicated thing. It sounds like it was just a, uh, just a specification on um, the video output potentially or the power um, uh, supply not being compatible that was potentially causing some of these issues. Uh, and with that, they just they made it more compatible, I believe, and then also added a way to reset. So I think we're pretty good on the docks. You're not going to have issues like you did on the Switch. And they, they came out with a uh, fix pretty quick. So um, they improved battery life and idle or very low usage scenarios that comes from the beta. That one is... Um, to be honest, one of the ones I'm most excited for, because sometimes I will put my device down for a few days and I want to go back in and play it. I'm hope I'm really curious to see how long that makes the device last in days or if it's more like hours. I, I'm really curious because I, I do sometimes put the devices down for a few days and I want to get back into it and I feel like it's dead and I don't want that. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, the SD cards, uh, they, they made it so SD cards are a little bit more bootable, friendly. Um, some of them just weren't. Uh, they don't go into a lot of details on that, and then they fix some haptic issues, and uh, <laughs> yeah, an ACPI error spew in the kernel. So, really, it, it, this is a very big update, and I'm really excited that they're really putting this much time and effort into this device. It really shows good faith. I think they still have some more work to do, especially with uh, game support and all that. Um, and it's an anecdotal, but someone from the community also mentioned, like, 
just that it feels like games are more compatible with this new release. So uh, there might have been, I didn't look into it, but there might have been a Proton update too. And so it's, things are looking good. I will have to definitely say, we're going to have probably a new review of the Steam Deck unit from all these publications in the next few months. And I think they're going to change their tune on it being um, a beta release, which is fine. I, I get it. If it's, it, it, it felt a little, it didn't feel fully complete when the Steam Deck came out. I get that. But it also was something that just never been done before. A Linux gaming portable device that really runs well. I just don't think it's ever been done well, or if at all. So with that being said, let me know in the comments below if I missed anything on all these updates. I know that there's uh, there's a lot here. And... There's a lot coming, I believe, in the next few months with both uh, the queue updates, the reservation updates, and just uh, just more updates for the Steam Deck. This is going to be a beast device to always have on hand, and I am excited to see where it goes. This really is truly an interesting time to be alive as a PC gamer because now we can be portable. This is unlocking so many roads for us. I want to know what you think in the comments below. So thank you guys for watching. Check out my other links in the description below. And thank you guys for supporting the channel and being with uh, with me and with the community so far. We're we're growing. We're doing great. This is a fun time for the community. I love it. I can't wait till I get my Steam Deck. We're gonna we're gonna slay some videos. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Ow!